So in the previous video, I showed that uh, we could do model selection via uh, the model evidence, via uh, marginalized likelihoods. Uh, but how are we going to actually compute these marginal likelihoods? We're going to explore that a bit in, in this video. So in the end, we want to make uh, predictions on my uh, marginal likelihoods in which all model parameters are marginalized out. And we already saw this in uh, uh, well the Bayesian regression case where we um, uh, did a Bayesian model averaging over my model parameters W. But ideally, I also do not want to make any particular choices for my hyperparameters alpha and beta. So if I want to go to a full Bayesian treat treatment of the model evidence, I really want to integrate my predictive distributions uh, over all my uh, different Ws. So these are the posterior di distributions for W, but they still dependent on some alpha. So that would actually mean that I also need to add this term and integration over alpha and beta, where I consider some posterior distribution for my alphas and betas. And this posterior in turn then depends on, um, well, hyper priors. So priors on my hyperparameters. So this gets complex quite quickly. And uh, even like <laughs> my priors over my hyper priors could maybe also contain priors. So, okay, it goes on forever. So this thing is super complex uh, to compute. But ideally we do want to stick with this Bayesian framework because well, <laughs> we like it. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make some approximations again. And maybe first let me write down and indicate that uh, the marginalization over W, that's something that we did before, right? And when we work with Gaussian distributions, uh, this was tractable and this actually resulted in a new Gaussian distribution. But if you want to include also now integration over other types of priors, which typically are very wide, uh, we do not know much about our, our priors or our, our, our hyperparameters in advance. And these integrals really become intractable. But let's just focus on what we currently have. So we already have our Bayesian uh, predictive distributions in which uh, W is uh, marginalized out, but this still depends on my hyperparameters alpha and beta, right? And now the premise is that we also want to integrate these out with uh, the posteriors for my hyperparameters, uh, the posterior given well all my uh, data for this particular model, D alpha, D beta. And I'm going to, again, make this assumption uh, this approximation in the way that we are going to assume that this uh, posterior distribution is uh, sharply peaked around some optimal values alpha star and beta star. So let me write this down. We're going to assume. So we're going to assume that this thing is sharply peaked around alpha star and beta star because then this means that this integral really evaluates uh, to this thing evaluated at alpha star and beta star, right? If suppose this would be a Dirac delta, then that means I'm only evaluating this thing at, well, the, the place where this uh, sharp, sharply peak distribution is centered around, which I assume to be alpha star and beta star. Okay, so this means that my model evidence is approximated via um, my Bayesian predictive distribution. So this one is the, the marginalized distribution uh, where we marginalize over W, but now evaluated at alpha star and beta star, uh, given my model MI. Okay, so this is the approximation that we're going to make, but then this means that we're going to select our alpha and beta star uh, by optimizing this particular thing over here, by optimizing over my posterior uh, distribution for these hyperparameters. So what does this look like? So we're really obtaining alpha star and beta star by looking at the argmax over alpha and beta of my posterior alpha beta given my uh, data. Okay, and using base rule, this corresponds to the argmax over alpha and beta. Um, the argmax over the likelihood of my data given these uh, model uh, parameters, hyperparameters, alpha and beta, times the likelihood for alpha and beta. Where uh, this likelihood is really uh, my, my Bayesian predictive model, right? So where I average out over the W parameters and I'm left with a predictive distribution for, uh, for my data parameterized by my hyperparameters alpha and beta. 
And so, okay, uh, the posterior is given by uh, this likelihood times the prior and then uh, divided by, uh, by the evidence, but it doesn't play a role in this uh, optimization uh, step. Now, the thing is, and I've mentioned this before, it's really hard to come up with priors uh, for these type of hyperparameters because a priori is very hard to tell which setting is going to be better than others. So typically we assume a very flat distribution uh, for my um, hyper priors, um, meaning that in the end, this particular term will not contribute much to this optimization problem. So we can approximate this by just optimizing over my uh, likelihood. And with likelihood, I mean the marginal likelihood, right? Uh, so uh, where I've marginalized out over uh, the W uh, parameters. Okay, and then we're back to the point of the previous video where I said uh, we want to do model selection based on the model evidence. Well, this thing here is the model evidence for a model which is parameterized by an alpha and beta. So really we're optimizing uh, the model evidence uh, by checking for different values for alpha and beta. Okay, so this is the model selection part where we select eventually the hyperparameters really that maximizes um, the marginal likelihood or the so-called uh, model evidence. Okay, so and then when we made our selection for the optimal hyperparameters, we end up with a predictive distribution uh, for uh, d prime given some input x prime, x prime, which depends on all the data that it has seen and my selected hyperparameters alpha star and beta star. Okay, so then for a given uh, model, so let's say for a given set of basis functions, let's say I pick 100 uh, basis functions, then I still have to pick these hyperparameters and I'm, going to, and I'm doing that by optimizing the model evidence. And if you compare this to, let's say the frequentist treatment that we had before, where we did parameter tuning via cross-validation, we really had to every step validate on a separate validation set. Now in this setting, we really we optimize uh, using all the data. So this uh, model evidence is defined via all my data to obtain the final settings for my uh, hyperparameters. And there's actually methods to do this, especially in the Gaussian setting again. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more on how to do this hyperparameter setting in, in uh, the Gaussian framework, uh, this is uh, done in an iterative way. It's a nice al algorithm in an iterative way in uh, Bishop 3.5.2. So we have actually models to really do proper hyperparameter selection in this fully Bayesian uh, setting. Okay, and this, that was actually done uh, in, in the book. So this is an example from the book of Bishop again. So we consider, uh, well, this curve fitting problem. So we have different models. So every model has, uh, so we consider polynomial uh, basis functions, and then we consider the order. Uh, so, well, the order of this uh, polynomial basis. And we're going to now just evaluate the model evidence for each of these orders, and we're going to plot it. So what we see for M is zero, I'm fitting a straight line. So I have a very poor model evidence, so really a poor model that's to be expected. And then we, when we add this linear component to it, well, I get a better fit. So I see that the model evidence uh, start to increase. Okay, that's good news. Okay, and now something interesting happened. Now I'm going to add X squared to my uh, basis functions. And what I see is actually that my uh, model evidence decreases. Now, why is this the case? Now, this is the case because I'm considering here uh, the sine wave, right? My data is constructed via the sine, uh, sinoidal uh, signal, uh, which is an odd function. And I'm adding a, now an even function to my set of basis functions. And so I can never represent this with an even function. So I'm actually increasing my model complexity, but I'm not really improving on my uh, predictions. Uh, so my likelihood itself isn't really improving. So, and that's actually shown over here. So we, sh we saw that before that my model evidence is a combination of this likelihood term and this complexity term. And we nicely see the complexity is increased. So that means that the model evidence uh, is decreased. Now, and then uh, if we add uh, X to the power tree, we actually obtain a very nice fit. So we actually improve or fitting behavior, and that results in a nice increase in my uh, model evidence. So with MSG, we can do a pretty decent fit, and then 
what we do next when we increase the order of the polynomials, we actually increase um, the complexity of the model without really uh, improving much on uh, the likelihood. So that means that the model evidence starts uh, decreasing again in the end. So really in this way I could automatically select uh, the most optimal order of my polynomials just by inspecting uh, the model evidence. Okay, so that is great news. I was able to uh, determine the optimal order of my polynomial fit just by considering all the data that they have, just by evaluating the model evidence. So there was no need to do uh, cross-validation.